Well, hello. <laughs> Good evening. Got my evening jacket on. Uh, yeah, I thought I would give a presentation on Algonquin on this. <laughs> Why? Because my entire spring speaking tour was canceled or rescheduled. And one of those talks uh, was actually on Algonquin Park. And why? Uh, well, I love Algonquin Park and everybody else does too. But I also have um, a new book. Well, it's an updated book coming out, Tyler's Guide to Algonquin. And uh, I was going to share all that to everybody. So um, I can't right now in public. So I thought I'd give this a, a try. I'm all new to this. I don't know if you've been watching, but I'm, I've been practicing with uh, my ID stuff, whatever. Um, and uh, it, it seems to be going okay. Cardinal. Northern Cardinal, love it. You will be hearing these all over the place right now. I don't know, I know there's other ways to do this. I just can't figure them out right now. So there we go. Uh, I hopefully what I'm gonna do is I'm, so I'm premiering this on, on YouTube. So in theory, you'd be able to chat along during the premiere and ask me questions. Uh, if that doesn't work, just ask me questions or even if it does work, just ask me questions uh, about the park and I'll answer them all, um, either on YouTube or on the, the, the live chat. All right, are you ready? Now I got a share screen. Okay. So Gonkin Park. Whoa. Oh, Gonkin Park. And um, yeah, so this is the, let me see here. This is actually supposedly the third edition of, of Powder's Got Algonquin. It's actually not, it's the fourth edition. The reason why they're calling it the third, uh, right down here, updated and expanded, is because, um, well, the, the three books that was called Powder's Got Algonquin is true, but the first copy was actually called Brook Trout Black Lights down here and back in the early 90s and that's my original title of the book and uh actually i think that's a great title but back in the day what happened was uh well um uh the publisher at the time went bankrupt i was on a really long canoe trip up in quetico for for over a month and back then like nobody could get a hold of me and so uh they um uh they bought the books and then they changed the title the reason why is a new thing called google search came out and uh so they uh, they say that nobody's going to find anything about a Gawkin Park or Paddling a Gawkin if it's going to be called Brook Trout Black Lights. So they changed the name. So I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger here. Yeah, anybody notice their dogs? Like, my dog has been so sucky. I don't know. Like, almost as if they kind of know what's going on. Uh, cheers, by the way. Never had this before. Okay. So I have updated all the information, but also added new routes. I'm gonna go over a whole pile of routes, by the way, not just the new routes, but uh, the new routes is, um, uh, I like to talk about that I put in the new edition. <clears throat> There's 10 of them, Obiongo Lake, amazing trip. Uh, Lake Lemire, Crow Lake Loop, amazing trip. Uh, Lower Crow, which is the river that flows out of uh, Lake Lavier, awesome, uh, especially for the Brook Trip angler. Carl Wilson Lake, which is the northeast end of the park, a uh, really remote place. Big East River, yes, I told myself I would never gonna go down the Big East River again, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what happened. Ralph Bice, Daisy Lake Loop, really easy route on, on the West End. Um, good for the weekend trips and or an easy five day. Uh, Ralph Bice Lake, um, I already said that. Gata Lake is down uh, by Booth Lake. It's an extension of Booth Lake area. Uh, McCaskill, beautiful lake. Oh, aqua blue, which is amazing. Uh, Cauliflower Lake, which is on the very south end of the park near the pan, well, on, on, at the panhandle. And a trip all the way right across Algonquin Park. And plus a whole bunch of other trips as well. Okay, so here's Algonquin. Uh, if you don't know where it is, basically we're in Ontario right now in Canada. There's Toronto right down here. Um, Hamilton, uh, Lake Ontario, Georgian Bay. There's Ottawa, there's Quebec. Okay, and um, if you're from the States, basically you just go north of Michigan and you'll find it. It's about two two hour drive from the Toronto airport. So from the border uh, by Michigan, uh, it would be probably probably six hours by the time you get there, depending on the traffic, I guess. Okay, uh, there are uh, 29 access points in the park. Some are less used than others. This one is the most popular one, Canoe Lake, absolute zoo <laughs> at times, insane at times. But I gotta say that, yes, Algonquin Park is really busy. It gets 800,000 plus people per year in total, not just the interior, uh, more people at the campgrounds and stuff like that. So that's a lot of people. But to escape the crowds, really, all you have to do is go more than three days. What's going on now, is going on for the last few days, or for the last few years, sorry, is that the average paddler now only goes for two nights, a uh, three day trip. So yeah, the perimeter around the park can be busy, especially on long weekends, but if you go into the middle, you're not gonna see a lot of people. And if you do see people, they're gonna be just like you, because the portaging 
Wow. Okay, I'll get to that in a minute. All right. <clears throat> it is our oldest park uh, in Ontario. It was uh, formed in uh, 1893. That's a long time ago. <clears throat> and um, uh, it was called a national park at, at first, but it was never a national park. It was always a provincial park, but they called it Ontario National uh, or Algonquin National Park. And since then, it's grown. Uh, it was, uh, it, it, well, I don't know if it was at first, it probably was, but it's a national environment park, but there's different protection zones in it. So there's wilderness zones and things like that. So they've expanded on it uh, throughout the years. Very large expanse of space and you can get lost here for days. And I enjoy going up there every few years and being lost for days at a time. This is one of the last real true wilderness zones in central Ontario, Gotham. I think Algonquin Park, even though it's a provincial park, uh, many people think it, of it on the national scale. It's just one of the nicest places you can go. Oh, I've been paddling the Petawawa since the 1980s, so it's one of my favorite rivers. I'm here for the rapids, I don't like the flat water. <laughs> Sticking your head outside the tent and you've got the most beautiful landscape in the world right in front of you. Nothing like it. There's nowhere else like it. It represents Canada in every way, shape, or form. If you catch an Opiongo sunset and you hear the loons out on the north arm, that's my most blissful moment. Just find seclusion and to get away from, from others, um, the introvert that I am. <laughs> Algonquin just represents wilderness. You can go back a hundred years in your own mind and, and be camping here and think of what it was like for a lot of people. I often think I was born a hundred years too late. Of course, I do like my Kevlar canoe. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great to get out in the outdoors and just see things that look very untouched. Well, I've spent the last 15 summers in Algonquin Park and I cannot imagine spending a, another summer anywhere else. This is what I know. You know, every trip holds a new experience and a new life lesson with it. They'll be ragged and dirty and they'll stink when they come back and they'll be as proud as they can be, right? It's become a part of who I am and how I think of myself. It's tripping in Algonquin because I've done that for so long. I know that wherever I'm going to be going and tripping in Algonquin, it's just going to be really beautiful and I'm going to have a great time. Every trip is so much fun, just in a different way. And I just, I love that. I think it's just really good to get away from the city and the buzz and all the noise and lights and internet. It just feels so nice to be like connected with nature. You come to realize a lot about who you are and about the kind of person you want to be. I was born and raised here and it's my home. What do you think about your home? Like, this is my home, so. I take my eulogy uh, about seven years ago and uh, one of the questions was, where and when were you happiest? And it, all of my happiness was in is all Algonquin Park. It's the most beautiful place in the world, don't you think? It is what it is. It's Algonquin Park. Good statement there by Gord at the end. <clears throat> All right, so goods and bads about Algonquin. I got to say, the major bad thing are portages. The average portage in, in Algonquin is a kilometer or mile, whatever. Uh, where if you go to the Quetico, the average portage is 200 meters. So Quetico Park um, up northwestern Ontario is far more canoeable than Algonquin. Uh, I guess the thing is we love it so much, though. I mean, it's close. It's it, it's uh, it's it's close to to the general areas. It's amazing brook trout fishing. It's it's a gongkum. Like they've all said, why they like it so much. But you got to realize that an average trip, yeah, you're going to do a, a, a few kilometers of portage. Love that. Okay, uh, biggest trip I ever did in the park uh, is the meanest link. I did it, uh, I guess, six years ago now when I turned fifty with my buddy Andy, um, and um, yeah, I won't go into great detail about it, but it's insane. Uh, let's see if the details here. It's busy. It was 420 kilometers, 55 lakes, six rivers, three of them going upstream, one of the big, biggest river, which is insane. Anybody that's done the meanest lake knows that that's the kicking point. Like, if you're going to give up, you're going to give up on the biggest river. And well over 100 uh, um, uh, portages that totaled up to 68 kilometers of portage. <laughs> But uh, it was created by uh, Algonquin Outfitters as a way to connect all their, their outfitting uh, places and to connect a loop through the park. And yeah, and I wrote a book about it. And actually, yeah, if everybody's been asking me about this. Yeah, this is, I, this is my, uh, my, gosh, that's my 18th book. Um, and uh, that was self-published. 
and that's my only one that I self publish and it's doing really well. So thank, thanks for everybody out there buying it. Uh, it's, it's getting good reviews and yeah. And maybe you should buy a lot of them now because <laughs> no speaking to her, no teaching. Uh, everything's done for me right now. Uh, so actually I'm doing a bunch of crazy things uh, um, just to keep saying like everybody else is and actually working on another book. All right, blah, 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 blah. All right, so the, the first route was a, a route right across the Gonquin Park. My, um, my family went across, my daughter and I, we basically went from the Minatawan. Let's see if I get the map here. Woo! Oh yeah, here's Kyla. <laughs> She's a teenager now. Where did it all go? But yeah, um, Kyla's been paddling since she's a wee, wee young one. And I think she was eight when we did this trip. And what happened was uh, she basically came home and said, everybody's making fun of her at school because she hadn't seen a moose yet. And I went, hey, if we go right across the park, we'll see a moose for sure. Uh, and we started off in Minatawan. We actually went down the Petawa River. We're actually gonna go down the entire Petawa Road. That was the plan, but there was, it was low water. So we gave up, I, we went up to catfish and they said, no, it's not possible. I sat phone, rearranged everything. And then we actually went to, down Obiongo and then down the uh, Obiongo River to Booth Lake, and that's where we ended it, so. Well, this is uh, day two of our 12-day trip across Algonquin Park, <clears throat> and Kyla saw a moose today. Well, right behind us is Kyla's first moose, and it seems to be blocking the path on our way out. Uh, the whole trip, actually, uh, the reason for this trip was for Kyla to see, to see a moose. Just for proof, the moose is right behind my head. She's seven years old, turn, turning eight uh, in August, and uh, she's been canoe tripping since she was six weeks old. And she finally, uh, a couple weeks ago, said, Dad, I haven't seen a moose, and I'm very upset about it. So I said, well, I, I think we might see one in Algonquin Park if we go right across the park. Okay, what do you think about your first moose? Good. <laughs> oh, man. Kids these days. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's look at other places. Uh, let's go to the south end of the Algonquin South, as they call it. Uh, Rock Lake Access Point is a really good way um, to access that area. Uh, a whole bunch of routes from, uh, from Rock Lake. You can actually do Rock Lake itself. It's such a lovely place. There's a campground there, but you can actually go in the interior and go to the island campsites. There's, um, what is it? I forget the horsepower. You're like a motor, motor, a motor and boat, but it's got to be a, a small engine. Um, yeah, and uh, it, it's, it's a great place. But you can actually go down to, to uh, Penn Lake. Uh, man, beautiful beach site on the left-hand side. I always see moose along there on Penn Lake. Uh, going to Clydesdale, which is not as busy. And uh, yeah, I actually really like Clydesdale. Uh, it, it's a really nice lake and a nice campsite as well. Or you can loop through around here through, uh, I can't pronounce it right, but through Night, uh, Night Lake. What I do is I take students on this trip. We do this loop and then we go up this hike uh, to end it, we actually look upon where we have just paddled, so it's kind of cool. But my ultimate favorite uh, a route from, from Rock Lake is uh, to go through um, to uh, Welcome. So we go down to Penn, Welcome, Airy, Rance. Those are protected lakes for brook trout, meaning it's a natural strain of brook trout in those lakes. So those trout or the genetic strain of those trout have been there since the ice age. So they're not introduced, they're not uh, stock fish. Um, there's a bunch of regulations because of that, but yeah, they're, it's amazing fishing and beautiful. I, I prefer, of all the three, I prefer Welcome Lake, to be quite honest. There's a beautiful sand beach camps out there. And then you go from Florence and then you um, go up uh, to, uh, well, over here to show you, sorry, uh, Florence, and then you go into this portage here. I would not recommend going on this long one. You don't really need to. Um, uh, but going to this portage into uh, Lake Louisa and beautiful lake and good lake trout fishing. There's actually brook trout in there. A lot of people think there's not, but we, I've caught brook trout. Uh, I'm not going to tell you where. <laughs> I do know that lake though. Uh, years ago, I was on a solo trip and I loved it so much. The Center Island campsite was just amazing. And I had a sat phone with me and I, I phoned my boss and said I was windbound. I wasn't windbound. <laughs> I feel ashamed. Uh, and then the only disadvantage when people why people don't want to do this is you've got a three uh, three kilometer portage on the way out. It's mostly flat. In fact, most of it goes on an old uh, old logging road, so it's not all that bad. This is a really good five day trip. It's a good shot. Man, that is close.
quite a good model, isn't he? Kind of mm -hmm. different angles, nice and slow movements. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice. Speckle. That's a beautiful speckle. Oh. Welcome, Lake Speckle. Yes. <laughs> Whoa! Do you want the net? It's all tangled up. Oh no! <laughs> Here we go. All right. Oh, I'm a really bad knitter, and I. Yeah. Oh, I got it. <laughs> oh, it spitted the, the hook out right then too. Anyway. Oh, you want me to take him from you, do you? Oh, well, you're gonna fill it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fill it him. Well, you're gonna eat him. Well, let me get a picture Look of him. Tim, he's licking his lips already. <laughs> Come on now, show it. Show it. Come on now, show what you got. It's not meant to be. It's not meant to be worn out. No, no. Come on. Just a little peek. All right, all right. Yeah, it's not meant to be worn as a toque. You look like a something out of a Monty Python movie. If... Whoa! Camelot. Woo! Uh, and uh, yeah, I got a new net for this year. Hopefully we're going this year because the park is closed until April 30th. If you haven't heard, uh, hopefully they'll open it after that. I'm not sure what we all know. Nobody knows what's going on right now, right? Uh, but yeah, our plan is to go uh, down the Nipissing again. I uh, love that place. Anyway, I'm blabbing. Okay, next route, the Cauliflower Lake route. This is a new route in, in, the, uh, in the book. And yeah, it's really simple. Uh, uh, it's down to the south end. You, you actually can't get your permit at the... Uh, Hay Lake Access, um, it's just nothing there. You have to go to the East Gate, uh, just uh, by Whitney, uh, Whitney, Whitney, and then come back to, to Hay Lake. There is a road, the Hay Lake Road, that actually com comes out of Whitney, Whitney uh, that you can drive and you can park uh, on Cauliflower Lake. It's, it's not, sometimes it's really rough. Um, uh, it's all doable. Sometimes it's especially in the spring, so just beware. Um, but mind you, you know, <laughs> I've done both and just to park here and pile across and portage up, why not? Uh, it's actually a really nice creek too. If, uh, if you want to just try this other one, Little Hay Lake, because why I like that is that there's one campsite on it. So if you get that campsite, then you have to lake to yourself. Really good bass fishing too. So yeah, Cauliflower Lake, it is a more of a crown land feel to it, to be quite honest, because um, it, it's part of the Panhandle Park. So, so it's different regulations. Uh, there's motorboats on Cauliflower, um, like small motorboats, whatever. Uh, and there is hunting in the fall, I think. Um, so yeah, and just, just so you know, like I have no issues with all those things, just so you, you know that when you get there, okay. Another one in the South, um, a lot of people don't go to King Scott. This has got a little campground there too, which is really, really nice. Uh, but King Scott uh, is, is on the Panhandle, and um, you can go through King Scott, and the lake trout in there are a silver type. They're, they're, they're lake trout, but they have a, it's j just a different genetic strain. Uh, and then, yeah, so you go to King Scott. I've stayed in King Scott a lot, actually, but then uh, you can go up to the Portage, uh, um, up into the uh, York River system, and uh, blah, 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 go up into what's called Scorched Lake. So the photo down here, that's Scorched Lake. That's the campsite right there that I love. And then you go up a hiking trail and you look upon Scorched Lake. It's beautiful, really nice place. A lot of people don't go there. Okay, let's look at the Canoe Lake Access Point. Yes, it's busy, but there's a lot of places you can go from there, right? So first one, you gotta try this. It's called the Brent Run. It's a lot better than the Meanest Lake, to be quite honest. It's an historical race. Uh, it goes from Canoe Lake to Brent, all the way up here to Cedar Lake, and then all the way back again. The record is 24 hours. Last time I did this trip, I did it in eight days, and that's a good, good amount of time. You could do it in six. You can do it in 24 hours if you want, but um, hats off to you if, if you do that. It's just not for me. Uh, my daughter and I did this trip uh, just a while back and just loved it. Why I like this route is that there's only really one bad portage on it in total. Uh, there's the one coming um, uh, down the Petawawa into Cedar. It's just under three and then you got three kilometers and you got to do it back again. There's three hills in it too. But overall, that's really of all the six days or eight days or 24 hour days, that uh, 24 hours, um, that is the only problem with that route. And it goes through some beautiful lakes in the center. You go through uh, Big Trout, which I love. You go through Burnt Root. Um, Burnt Root? Uh-oh. Uh 
I think it was burnt root, uh, and then through catfish, and it's just amazing. Yeah, Kyla had a beautiful time. That's Catfish Lake right there. That's a really nice campsite, by the way. A lot of people don't even see the sign up there, but there's a campsite right up in the ridge. That's okay. So the West End uh, of Algonquin, uh, I go there a lot. I always have. Uh, now I live in uh, near Peterborough, which is actually not on the west side of Algonquin, but when I used to live in Milton, Ontario, which is a not Milton anymore. It used to be a small cow town. Now it's just a part of Toronto. But um, it was it was an easy access point and not as busy as the Canoe Lake access point. The road in is a long one, just to warn you. Okay, um, warn you. <laughs> you get your permit at the Rain Lake access point, and then you drive down this road, and you think, "Am I going to get there? I'm going to get there." I do remember years ago, though, we were coming back, and all of our vehicles got broken into. I don't know how many vehicles were there. It was the long weekend of May, and they all smashed the windows. In fact, the the, the only um, Man, that was a brutal time. Uh, yeah, everybody got broken into, but I'm not sure why I'm telling you that. Now you don't want to go to the Conklin Park now. But anyway, the one route that I've done a lot, especially uh, in my youth with my, my fishing buddies, is you start at the West End uh, and you start at Minatawan, uh Access Point, and you go down to Daisy, uh, go down to Misty. So you're, you're basically going down the Petawawa River, and you go down the Pet Petawawa River to Grassy Bay, and you're going to see moose there, especially in the springtime. I think on my uh, trip once um, a number of years ago, well, we did a five night trip there. We saw 29 moose and most of them were in Grassy Bay. Uh, what moose are doing in the early spring is they're coming down to get the uh, fresh aquatics uh, growing in, in the river system or, uh, and the creeks uh, because they've eaten buds, uh, twigs all, all winter. So they really crave that rich vegetation and, and the salt. So um, yeah, going to White Trout Lake. White Trout Lake, if you have a chance, go, go get this kidney-shaped island campsite down there. Uh, it's really beautiful. Uh, man, it's beautiful. And there's a big cliff along White Trout uh, there. There's old logging remains as well. That's kind of cool. Um, and there's a, a cabin that I'm sure is still there down, down at the bottom end. Uh, and then you go into Big Trout, which is connected by just the channel. And Big Trout is just epic. It's just amazing, huge a variety of island campsites, really good fishing for brook trout and lake trout. And then what, what I've done from there is I've gone back up through McIntosh Creek uh, uh, and then headed up through there back to Daisy, and that's a good route. Um, you could go down the Tim River and then go up Petawawa if you want. Uh, the Tim River, though, just don't do it in low water. You'll regret it, okay? So, yeah, good in, in the spring, really good trip, but it's one of those, are we there yet, are we there yet? Uh, so I would choose the Petawawa uh, if the water is low. So that's a really good five-day trip. Um, why I like it, there's only one bad portage. I think it's just, just over 800 meters. Overall, the rest are like 200, 300. So it's a really good trip. Okay, Ralph, Ralph buys Daisy Loop. I put this uh, new one in the, in, the, uh, in the book basically because it's just a really good weekend or leisurely trip. Uh, so uh, you go from Minatawan into, uh-oh, uh someone's trying to get a hold of me. <laughs> uh, into Hambone, and then you go into Ralph Bice Lake, and Ralph Bice Lake is named after Ralph Bice, the chopper writer uh, years years ago. And I think it was Eagle Lake, and uh oh, forget what the lake was before. It was not a name though. It's probably a good. I don't remember it because it was it was weird. What was it? But yeah, Butt Lake. I think I'm pretty sure was it. <laughs> Uh, you can actually just go from Ralph Bison and stay there. It's a really nice lake. These island sites are really beautiful. You can get those and head back. Really good fishing down here too. Uh, but you could also do this this portage here. It, it's straight. It's long, but it's straight and straight and doable. And then loop back through here. So it, it's a really good loop. The East River. Yeah. Uh, when I did the, the Minas Link, I said never do this again. But I was going upstream. And why would you go upstream, especially on the Big East River? We we waited the entire thing for four days. So the cool thing what happened though, is that um, a, a couple of years ago, uh, the park um, cut uh, two portages that weren't there when we did it from McCraney down to the Big East. So when we did the Big East through the meanest link, we actually portaged um, through the bush for almost four kilometers up a hill. And now they have, a, they have, they have the uh, portages cut. Um, and, and then so really, a really good spring trip is to go to Rain Lake Access Point, go to McCraney Lake, portage down, and you're actually going down more hill than you are the other way we did. Get to the rapids, and then basically run the whole entire trip all the way if you want, to Huntsville if you want, but you can end 
whole bunch of various places, but there's a um, Lake Vermilion has a little beach there, public access that you can actually end there as well. And there is a local outfitter, uh, what are they called? Um, uh -oh. There is an outfitter, I, I, I can't remember, but there's an outfitter right down, down the, at the bottom there by the road that actually will shuttle for you. Uh, there's a small little campground and, and they will do that. All right, so Big East River, it's a really good, I would say, perfect three night trip. I wouldn't do that in the summer. Well, you know, if you're doing the summer, you're just wading downstream. I'd rather wade down than wade up. That's us going up the Big East. It's a very scenic river. I, I gotta say, I loved it. Huge, huge trees in there because I don't think the loggers could get in there in the old days because of the rough terrain. So they just left these massive, massive trees. But yeah. Okay, Lake Obiongo. Ah, oh, love that lake. It's huge and get really, really uh, um, windy and dangerous. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a lot of people zoom across it, either the pal across or they get the shuttle so they can go in the interior. And I've done that many, many times, but sometimes you think, well, I'm forgetting one of the best parts is the Lake Obongo. So just pal all the way around it. It'll take you four days, five, five days. I should, I would do it in five days. I just do it clockwise or counterclockwise going to Andy's Bay. It was really nice and yes, yeah, beautiful. And, uh, yeah, so la, no, two years ago now, um, my, uh, my uh, girlfriend and partner, Christine, and I went, and beautiful, look at that. Not always like that, <laughs> it can get windy, just to warn you, but be safe out there. Have you having fun yet, Christine? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> we got the cap, we oh, 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 we are. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> just in time, <laughs> woo! We have a new tent, uh, what's it called, a summer pass? Summer pass. Summer pass three from Eureka. <laughs> well, now you know about lakes. What seems to be the issue? I'm a bit wet. <laughs> I'm literally sitting in a puddle right now. In your chair? A puddle in my chair. <laughs> Give me more room in the tarp, please, Kevin. Thunder and lightning. And it's only the first day. It'll pass. Uh. Hey, Ollie. How you doing? Are you having a good time? I'm not talking to you. Yeah, I, I know my owner loves you, but I don't right now, Callan. The happy camper. You can go. Where the sun doesn't shine. Where are you going home yet? I think it's clearing up now, Christine. No, it's not clearing up. No, it not seems yet. like it's clearing up. <laughs> no. <laughs> we did that trip at the time was because we only been dating for a year or whatever and I um Christine loves camping uh, more campground camping she has done in the past uh not a lot of interior and I didn't want to overwhelm her I didn't want her hating canoe tripping so uh, I made an easy trip and the two dogs and uh, both of us had a great time so tough for that storm I'm terrified of storms Christine is not yes um yes 
All right. From Obiongo, though, there's a whole bunch of other places you can access. Uh, taking the shuttle or, or paddling. I, I generally take the, the shuttle, um, you know, just get you in the interior quicker. So one of my uh, favorite is to go from Obiongo, go into uh, Lemire Happy Isle, and actually even that is a good trip, uh, just to stay in there and then come back again. But to go from, from uh, Happy Isle, Lemire, um, and then go into this portage here, into Big Trout, and even come back if you want from Big Trout, just spend the whole week in Big Trout and come back the same way or continue to, into Burnt Root and then Lemire and Hogan, amazing lakes, amazing. If you have never been in those two lakes, you have gotta check them out. The only disadvantage of this trip I would say is this portage going from Hogan to, uh, to, to Crow. Um, it's epic. Like I, the last time I did it, it took me four hours. It was crazy. So uh, yeah, um, it's like, so, but once you get to Crow, that's a beautiful lake as well. Then you go in uh, down through Peru and then go into Obiongo. So it's a nice, really good loop. If you don't want to do this really bad portage, uh, really, I've done this a lot. I've gone in uh, through, uh, through here, through uh, Big Trout and then Lemire Hogan, spent a few days in there, come back the same way. Yes, that's kind of silly, Kevin, but no, it's not really. I mean, I'd rather be paddling those beautiful lakes again than actually doing that portage. Another route uh, from there I've done before too is you would go into Obiongo, you go into Happy Isle um, itself, and then you go to doo -doo -doo -doo, Red Rock Lake. Supposedly Red Rock Lake is haunted. I think people say it's haunted, so nobody will go in there fishing. <laughs> it's a beautiful lake, very beautiful lake. And you can loop back through here into Peru and then come back, or you just go back the same way if you want. But you might as well do that loop. It's good. That's a good three-nighter. Really good fishing. I find uh, um, Lemire, go back to here. Uh, not Lemire, what am I saying? Did I say Lemire? Um, geez, Happy Isle uh, is a really good lake for fishing. They're not big, but I, 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 you catch a lot there. I shouldn't be telling you that. All right, but it's a good lake. You can do a huge loop from there too. You can actually go from Obiongo into Peru, go up to Big Crow, go down the Crow River into Lavier. Uh, which I would say is the gem of Algonquin Park. It is gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, and then you go into Dixon, and then the only disadvantage of this route is you got a five kilometer plus portage to get it back into Obiongo, called the Dixon Bonfield Portage. That's my buddy Andy strangling me because I jokingly said we're heading across the portage. So I said, oh, it's only 500 meters. Well, it's not, it's, it's five kilometers. Um, so he wasn't very happy with me. Uh, so here's the thing a lot of people say, well, geez, Kevin. I love to do that route. I just don't want to do the five kilometer portage. Um, you could try to go back up the Crow River if you want. The portage is better. Uh, lots of current, lots of portages. I would not even think of attempting to go back up the, the, the Crow River. Uh, the Dixon Bonfield portage, I've done it six times. Every time I do it, I tell myself not to do it again. It's long, but it's all doable. It's, it, there's not a lot of hills on it. Uh, was the average person um, goes one kilometer every 20 minutes. So if you do a one carry, it's not too bad. Uh, I did almost break the record once though. I, I did the entire portage in 46 minutes, or I think the record is 42 minutes. And why I did that is every time I went put my canoe down, uh, a bear, a uh, problem nuisance bear was actually waiting for me to put my pack down. Uh, and uh, it was just following me. So I <laughs> put my canoe back on, <laughs> got the heck out of there, so, okay. There's a little problem. I thought you said it was 530 meters long. <laughs> but I think you dropped a zero. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't it your turn to carry the canoe? You did it! I, I forgot my water bottle at the other end. Can you get it for me, Kevin? <laughs> okay, uh, another trip. Uh, now, Booth Lake, this is actually in the southeast part of the park. Uh, just um, uh, east of Whitney. I'm going to say Whitby, Whitney, and um, yeah, that's ex that's upsetting too. Well, it hasn't been canceled yet. I haven't got a call yet, but I'm in May. I'm supposed to present in the in the library with the Whitney, so hopefully that still goes. But anyway, um, all right. So go from um, uh, Crotch Lake or, or Farm Lake access point, and then you head across Farm Lake, which is always windy, always. And if you're going this way, it's windy against you, and if you're going back, it's windy. It's always windy. It's really shallow lake. I think that's the issue. But you go and you do a really easy 90 meter um, and then when you're coming back the same way that 90 meter you can run that swift or not uh, but it, you can easily run that swift if the water levels up and then you've got the 645 meters uh, into Booth Lake 
It's not bad. Oh, forget that beer. Um, and uh, I should get some whiskey. Wait a minute. I can, I, you know what? I can pause this. Can I? Yes. Oh, look at this. Never done this during a presentation. I'm going to pause. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to have a wee bit of this. These uh, presentations online, it's just, they do me in. Mm. Anyway, sorry about that. All right. Uh, Booth Lake is great. It's a good family lake. Um, on the right-hand side, all the campsites on the, on the, on, on the right-hand side are all on beaches. It's beautiful. All the ones on the left are on rock points. Pike are in there now, so the fishing is, is good for bass and pike and some trout, but it can decimate the trout, so I'd rather not have the pike there. But if you want to catch a pike, pretty much guaranteed you're going to get one in Gata. Not Gata, sorry, Booth. To extend that, though, uh, go down into uh, McCarthy, uh, McCarthy Creek. which has got a lot of American buildings in there nesting. And then you uh, go to Mole Lake and Portage Uphill <laughs> into Gata Lake. And Gata Lake, it's not a Merrimetic Lake. Merrimetic Lake is a lake that, that doesn't flip over, so it's really clear. But to me, it looks like a Merrimetic, but they say it's not. So, uh, but it's aqua blue. It's just beautiful. And then camp there and then head out uh, around there. Now, if you want, instead of doing that, uh, as an overnight, you can actually do as a day trip while you're on Booth Lake too, so it's quite nice. However, the last time I went there, it was uh, Mother's Day weekend, and it snowed big time on this. Like, oh man, it was brutal. <laughs> oh man, it was brutal. But nice, nice to get out. I think it's gonna be an early spring this year. That was not an early spring. The Caskill, uh, Casco loop, it's not a loop. Uh, I wanted to put loop, it's a uh, linear. So basically, uh, yeah, you go from Farm Creek uh, Access Point again, just like from the Booth Lake, except you go uh, go north into Shirley Lake, which is actually a really nice lake too. It's got some good sand beach campsites, really big lake. And then you head through all these portages into these small lakes. Um, actually, what lake is that? Ryan Lake is, is stocked with splake. So you, you probably, that's why there's so many campsites on there, I guess, but it, that's a big, huge ridge, uh, sand ridge up there that people camp on. But yeah, it's good fishing with splake. But then you head out and you portage this really long portage that seems to take forever into McCaskill. Why McCaskill? Uh, it's aqua blue. It's an amazing uh, trophy for trout fishing. And uh, the campsites are just stunning. So you have to then go back the same way you came and you're going to be walking a lot, just morning. All right. This access point, I love. Okay, it seems like, like, like I love everything, but basically they, they, this one's fantastic. Cedar Lake, yeah, it's a lot further to drive if you're going from Toronto or, or, or from the States, but if you live in Ottawa, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, Cedar Lake is on the northeast end. Uh, it's a really long dirt road on the way in. It'll take you forever and it's bumpy. Uh, I, I should, uh, it was a corduroy road, about one of those. But you'll get there and there's a whole bunch of places to go. Uh, one, for example, you can go from Cedar Lake and Cedar Lake, just warn, warn you, when you're going across Cedar Lake, the, the wind will only pick up when you get halfway across. <laughs> it will never be when you start. Um, you always get halfway across, hey, everything's great, and boom, and just prevailing winds go right across. And it's a very, very dangerous lake, so just watch it, okay? So you go from Cedar Lake and you go up the Petawara River, or sorry, I the Petawara, you go up the Nipissing River and then um, go to Burnt Route and then go down the Petawara. Or do the, the opposite, it doesn't matter. In fact, actually, I've done both. The current on the Nipissing at this point is not too bad. But um, yeah, if you want to go up the Petawawa, you're going to be portaging anyway. And then actually go down the Nipissing would be good too. I think the only disadvantage of that section is the Nipissing, lower Nipissing. Not too exciting. It, it it's not, doesn't have the big, huge pine. It's sort of a flat um, area, swampy area. You see, you see lots of moose. Or... You can actually then, uh, uh, you can do this loop here, which I've done before, and this portage isn't so bad, but um, it's worth it to get Radiant Lake, but there's other ways that I can show you to get Radiant Lake other than this. I prefer this one. You basically go up the Petawa River, um, up into Burnt Root, and then Lemure, Hogan, and then go through a Sunfish Lake, and then back to Catfish. And the only difficult part, well, there's a bit of hills on this portage, but this is the portage that's almost three kilometers. And uh, you got to do it twice. But you got a five or six day route that actually only has one bad portage. And that's pretty good in Algonquin Park. And I don't know how many times I've done this trip. And the fishing is amazing. The scenery is amazing. And it's quite isolated. And Catfish Lake does have catfish in it. I was cleaning a lake trout at night with my headlight on. And all of a sudden, these catfish came up and started eating the guts. It was cool. 
Okay, you uh, can do the Petawa River. You can actually go from Cedar Lake if you want and head down to uh, McManus. It's a good five day trip. The upper part, to be quite honest though, um, it, it's shelf that the, the, most of the rapids you can't run. So you're portaging. Um, I mean, you can run them, but if you're just moderate white water, no, you can't. So I think the better one is to go from uh, Lake Traverse to McManus and it's a good three night trip. And this is where Bill Mason did a lot of his filming. Uh, you probably recognize the, the, the Natch. Uh, he did a lot of the filming because he lived in Ottawa. And even when you're watching Water Walker, that actually is Lake Superior, some scenes are actually on uh, the Petawawa. He did the how-to films, um, mostly on the Petawawa. So really cool. Nice, nice river. Uh, the Natch is beautiful. I actually remember uh, one night, in fact, actually it was that night when my buddy and I were camping there. Uh, we we're cooking uh, two uh, steaks on the fire. It was getting dark and a um, fox came up and it grabbed my peanut butter and ran off in the bush. So I ran after it and of course my, my buddy said, hey, he's back here. And it wasn't, it was another fox went and stole the steaks off the fire. Smart. It was actually another two a story too, where uh, I do know a, a couple that got married up, up top of the Natch and they got a minister um, from Pembroke, I think, but they dumped in the rapids just before the Natch and he almost refused to marry them. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the, the lower part of it, you've got some good rapids. The World Away Rapid, I would think, is one of the worst. The reason why it's such a long rapid, that if you mess up in the beginning, you're going for a really bumpy ride. And uh, at least one person is drowned there. And uh, uh, Blair Fraser. And there was a cross there. Um, I guess the whole story about that in my, my latest book, I have a really good story. But basically, yeah, um, Blair Fraser was a canoe partner of uh, Trudeau. Uh, not our Trudeau now, but the, the, the dad. And yeah, um, good story. Okay. This is how to get to Radiant Lake. You gotta go to Radiant Lake. Uh, it, it, it's, it's got sand beaches everywhere. It doesn't get a lot of traffic that I know of. Um, it's, uh, it's got walleye, bass, uh, and lake trout and brook trout. So the fishing is amazing. And um, yeah, I just love it. And this was the original start point of Algonquin before Highway 60, because the train went and they, it stopped at Radiant. It stopped at Algonquin, a lot of places, but this was the main, uh, stopover for uh, the park. And if you read that book, Incomplete Angler, I think that's where they started too. So what you do is you go to Wingo Lake, which is on the northeast side, it's on the road in um, from uh, uh, towards Cedar. Uh, no? Yes, yes. Um, and then uh, you go from there down to th these series of lakes and do all these little tiny portages and go to Radiant and come back all the way again. It's a really easy trip. It's an amazing trip. There's nothing difficult about it, except Radiant Lake can get really windy at times, but uh, that's fantastic. Three to five to six day trip. Lower Crow. Okay. Lower Crow River. Uh, it's not easy to get to. Uh, that's why there's amazing fishing on, on that river. And yes, you could go to Lavier Lake um, and go down from there, but you have to do the Dixon Bonfield Portage if you're going to do that or get a shuttle maybe if, if you want to do that. Problem with Lavier right now, Lavier and Dixon, uh, is there's an algae bloom that's going on in Dixon the last couple of years, and they, have, they haven't closed Dixon. You can pile through it, you can't camp on it, you can't drink the water, don't let your dog drink the water because the dog will die. And Lavier, a bit of Lavier has been affected too. And I can't see that not happening this year. So you know, check the, the website and stuff like that for the parks, but yeah. Um, another way to get in there is you go from the same access point I was talking about, Windigo, go down to Radiant, and you paddle down the Petawawa River, to where you get to, to the Crow, which is Blueberry Waterfalls, and you head up the Crow, and just to warn you, you're walking most of that, okay? It's not an easy trip, okay? Uh, and then you go Lavier, and then you come back the same way again. That is the easiest way to get to the Crow. It's not easy, but it's the easiest way to get to the Crow. When you're going up the Crow River, you're gonna be portaging uphill most of the time, but on the way back, you're going downhill. Why? Nobody goes there, and the fishing is amazing. Told you I catch a fish. <laughs> nice speckled trout. Oh, beauty! <laughs> oh, he's good. Oh, look at that! Okay, second cast. <laughs> a Gogren Park trout. I love this. I love trout. <laughs> And later on today, we're going to catch a few to have for supper. <laughs> oh, I lost them! <laughs> supposed to be, you're supposed to be very quiet in a in a trout hold, so they don't spook them. Oh, okay. So I'm yeah, I'm being very quiet about this. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's 
quicker than the other one. <laughs> Gotta make sure it's hard to get to and really, really make sure it's, you deserve it, you know? And that's why there's speckles in here. If it's easy to get to and there's easy portages, there wouldn't be speckles. I'm just loving being out here right now. If you look over here, you'll see the next portage. You're freaking kidding me? That's it. Are you so, serious? I hope we don't get lost paddling across to the next portage. The next one is like a, another kilometer and a half. Yeah. So we just, what are you going to walk across? We're going to walk or paddle across? Um, I, uh... You're going to throw me across. <laughs> Well, I quit, so you're on your own from here. <laughs> Just swallowed a buck. Sorry. That's disgusting. I just swallowed a buck. I think it was a deer flag. Okay, I think in that one fishing hole, uh, we caught well over 30 brook trout. It was amazing. I'm not saying you're going to catch over 30 brook trout when you go, but it's good fishing. Okay, uh, the north end of Algonquin. Great when you live in North Bay or Sudbury, or if you just want to try something different. Lots of uh, possible uh, places to go. From Chaos Lake, uh, which is actually a beautiful lake just to stay on as well. You go up at the um, Maple Creek into Maple Lake, Aravel Lake, and then do a loop back through, uh, through Mink Lake, and that's a really good trip. It is uphill all the way coming this way, so you might want to consider doing it the other way. But then these portages are uphill too, so I don't know. I, I, I prefer doing it like counterclockwise. It's a nice trip. A uh, really nice trip too is from Kiosk. You actually go down into uh, Three Mile Lake, uh, into Manitou, um, which is, I love that lake, uh, up through uh, O'Fable uh, Creek, and then back to Chaos. But another really good trip is you start at Round Lake, uh, the, the western, uh, northwestern access point, and you go from Round Lake to North T and go down into Bigger and then portage into Three Mile. Make sure you go from Three Mile to Manitou, not Manitou to Three Mile, because that, uh, that portage, it's almost, what is it? I, th I think it's over three kilometers, if I remember. I uh, can't see it now. But uh, if you're going from three mile to Manitou, it's actually downhill. If you're going from Manitou to three mile, you're going uphill the whole bloody way. All right, so Manitou, beautiful lake, lots of sand uh, beaches, uh, North, North Sea, lots of island campsites. Really, really, really nice place of park. There's a better image there, um, right there. I've actually gone through here too, by the way. I wrote about that. It's a slog. Uh, when you see the black portage markers, that means they're not maintained on a regular basis. Um, and yeah, low water too, stuff like that. We did that in the spring. Um, didn't see anybody. But yeah, this stretch right down here we did. Actually, we went from here to bigger, down through here, uh, up into Ravel, and then back up through here, and then down this way. It was about a five day trip that I think my buddies will never ever do again with me. Manitou Lake, beautiful lake. Okay, now I'm getting into my hunting ground. <laughs> I'm a brook trout angler, love it. Okay, so I, I know the Nipissing, I could pilot blindfold, okay? Uh, so a bunch of ways you can do the Nipissing, but this is uh, a quick and easy, well, not easy, uh, a, a quick access. You go to Tim Lake, which is the access point just above Minato on access point, so you're looking at the west end of the park. And you head from Tim, and actually the road into Tim is a lot nicer or easier than continuing on to Minatawan, by the way. And so you, uh, you go uh, from Tim Lake, and then you go into these sections of little lakes. Uh, Bob Lake is just gorgeous. Everybody passes Bob Lake because they're all getting to the Nipissing, but yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a nice place. And you head down the Nipissing, and here's the problem on this, this stretch here. I would not go upstream. I would actually go downstream. And it's not that there's a strong current. It's just full of alders. And the last time I went, which was two years ago, uh, maintenance crew had cut the alders a bit, but they're going to grow back, right? So you're basically going through, and it's like um, oh, the African Queen, that movie. Remember that? Uh, it, it's like that Bogart and Catherine Hepburn. Uh, man, it's brutal. So then you go down into, uh, into uh, the Loontail Creek, go up Loontail Creek, which, which gets pretty low, but it's all doable. I've even done that in the summer, um, and Latour Creek. Uh, and then you go into Roseberry. Roseberry is really nice lake. Even if you don't want to do the Nipissing, just go down the Tim River from, from Tim uh, Lake into Roseberry, and then go back up again, it, and it's a good, easy trip. If you get that one campsite on the northwest, no, northeast corner, it's a sand beach. It's, it's great. And that's where Ralph Bice's dad's trapping cabin was. And I think his dad was the first to get arrested for trapping 
when they made it a park. So trappers weren't allowed to trap anymore in the park, even though the park was allowed to trap to make money for the park. Hmm, things haven't changed. <laughs> anyway, so he said, oh, darn you, uh, the heck with you. And then yeah, they caught him, put him in jail. I think, I think he was only in jail for like two nights or something. So um, yeah, so basically you go down uh, Lutcher, or actually up Lutcher, um, Mutel, into Rosebury, and then go up the Tim River, which is a, an easy paddle. There's, no, there's one rapid, but you pour tires around. There's no real strong current. Lots and lots of moose on, the, on, the, on that section. Here's the Nipissing, just before you get into the alders. You're going to see a lot of moose on the Nipissing. Nipissing River, another way, you can actually go from uh, Round Lake to North T and go down through, a, there's two creek sections there, um, and then go down the Nipissing all the way down to, to Cedar. And you can loop back through Chaos as well. If that's all possible. That's a good 10 day trip uh, through Manitou as well. Um, or you can just get a shuttle and uh, do that. So yeah, the whole Nipissing is worth it if you want to do that. It's, it's a good one week trip though. I wouldn't be doing that for a, for a weekend. No. And the center part is just full of massive white pine and trout and everything else. Just be warned, it is a very buggy place. I've just found that the Nipissing is one of the buggiest places in the park. I don't know why, but mosquitoes are just nasty. But here, yeah, beautiful, beautiful trout uh, water, you know, that tan, uh, tan colored dark water with brook trout slopping up the flies, just amazing. There's a cabin uh, along the way and you can rent it to get a key and then uh, you go and use it. I generally don't. Uh, I always find that it's way too hot in it and it's, um, uh, it's got a lot of garter snakes and a lot of mice. <laughs> yeah, make sure you get one of these bug shelters. Eureka has uh, them, uh, they're just a godsend. Um, I remember the first time taking one of my buddies, they all made fun of me and now they beg me to bring it. So good way to escape the bugs. Huge pine on the Nipissing, massive pine. It's really cool about the Nipissing too is the, uh, the, um, the there was POW uh, uh, camps along the way where uh, German so soldiers, I think they're, they're from the, the uh, no, they were, I think they were pilots. Anyway, they were put there and when the war was over, a lot of them came back to their area because they liked, liked it so much. So, Okay, Carl Wilson Lake. So we're going back to Cedar Lake to look at another route. Um, you can connect this with the Nipissing if you want, make a whole loop, whatever, but, but yeah, this is a, a good four-nighter. And you go from Cedar Lake Access Point, go up to Cedar. Uh, again, we're looking at the northeast part of the park and you head into these small little uh, ponds, Laurel Lake, and then you do this one kilometer portage in Carl Wilson. Do not do this. Do not go in Carl Wilson this way. You can go out that way, but those portages are for billy goats, okay? Um, they're really steep and, and hilly mostly going into Carl Wilson. So if you're going to do that loop, go from Cedar up into a little Cushon, I can't pronounce that like that very well, um, and then Portage into Carl Wilson. You can take this short path through here um, if you want to do that, but again, Billy Goat Portages. Uh, and I would not go from, from uh, Little Cedar up into Carl Wilson. I'd go the other way because, um, or last time I did this, I went to Cedar, uh, went up to uh, Little Cushon and then went into Carl Wilson and I came back the exact same way. So I only, only have that one long thousand meter portage which was relatively flat and not do all the, all the other crazy things. So it was pretty good. Why go to Carl Wilson? It is surrounded by cliffs. The campsites were a little bushy, but uh, uh, fish is good. Uh, solitude is good. Not a lot of people go to Carl Wilson and just full of cliffs. It's just very, very scenic lake. Beautiful, beautiful lake. Good fishing. Okay, I'm going to end this in a, in, a, in, a, in a bit with a little bit video, but first of all, I'd like to thank all these people. I'm going to move myself here for this sponsor. Ooh. Hope I can move myself. Okay, um, that's an important sponsor. You're a good friend of mine. So yeah, I'd like to thank all these people. They basically were helping me with the tour. <laughs> um, and I gotta thank them all because uh, I, I, they know I'm gonna reschedule a lot of these, but they also know that all my big shows are, have been canceled and they didn't have a problem. They just said, well, you know, we're, we're, we're still gonna help you. And they knew that I would use other ways to present this. So I hope that this is kind of working. So Eureka, Jim Stevens, Ian, great guys. Um, uh, they're actually uh, paddling buddies of mine. Uh, Venture Medical Kits, uh, they've been my sponsor for years, actually a great company. Novacraft, uh, yeah, good, good, good friends. And uh, the, the new owner, Chris, amazing guy. 
Uh, Tim retired, and that's good because he's going canoeing now. Uh, Kelly Kettle from Ireland. Patrick. Patrick and Glenn. Uh, they're great. Uh, I love the Kelly Kettle. And they were very nice people in a good family business. And uh, Ben's is connected to Venture Medical Kit. Afterbite is uh, connected to them as well. You got the Canadian Outdoor Equipment, which actually Tim, my canoe buddy, uh, owns. And um, yeah, I go with him all the time and uh, he helps me out a lot. The uh, Canadian Outdoor, um, uh, 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 Canadian Outdoor, sorry, the uh, Canadian Canoe Museum uh, that's in Peterborough here, just uh, south of where I live. And if you haven't checked it out, check it out. And they are moving. The, they made the, the announcement. They're going to start building the, the new place uh, soon. So that's pretty cool. And uh, Badger Paddles, Fiona and, and Mike, uh, really good friends of mine. They uh, have the, that uh, Find the Paddle contest um, every year. And uh, good paddles, too. And Mike's a great guy. I travel with him a lot at all the shows. And we, we hang around together. And Algonquin Outfitters, always good people. Uh, know them really well. They've helped me for many, many years. And uh, there's a good, they're a really good bunch, actually. So I guess what I'm saying is, yeah, they're my sponsors, but all of them are my, my friends. Uh, I, I've been in the canoe business or the writing business or whatever, whatever business this is, or life lifestyle um, for many years and I know a lot of people and I'd like to thank them for helping me with all this. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pause this for a second, set it up again, then put it off pause. I'm gonna have a little last little clip of Ashley, um, just to make fun of my, my fishing buddy, Algonquin, Ashley McBride, a speedo man. <laughs> um, I just had a, little, a, a clips of, of him and I together and it's a lot of fun. Okay, so let me just pause this if I can. 30 degrees one week, four degrees the next. My God, it's incredible. Where have you brought us, Kevin Cowan? Fingers crossed, hopefully we'll get home to our loved ones. Oh, it's a big speckle. Oh, he won't fit the net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go! I'm not a gloating person, so I will not gloat. Next question, who caught it? <laughs> I think everybody caught fish today, didn't they? Oh, he didn't. Nice. Oh, I, no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to rub that in. Sucks to be key. Kevin's a little down right now, I'm worried about him. He hasn't caught a single fish. Um, and I hate to tell him that he's no good at fishing, but uh, I don't want to hurt his feelings. He doesn't know anything. I think I taught him most of what he knows, especially the fish inside of it. So hopefully things will pick up for him. Um, I'm always rooting for the guy that can't catch fish. I'm not one to glow up myself. Uh, but I have caught quite a lot and quite big ones actually. Everything we have is uh, whiskey. Whiskey uh, flavored. Yeah, because yet again, every year this happens. We opened up that barrel just now and I'm like, what can I smell? And you're like, oh, I don't know. What can it be? And sure enough, at the bottom of my barrel is his whiskey and it's all spilt. I I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you're seriously going to kill you. That was full. We couldn't get any more in it. But he didn't type <laughs> lid. Oh, I yeah. wonder why I smell so, whiskey. Everything absolutely stinks of whiskey. This happens every year. There's no more whiskey because you spilt it all. Just one glass I spilt by Doesn't accident. Matter. That's another little shot we'd have each. But oh no. There's a little bit there for me. I don't know what the hell he's going to put in his coffee. <laughs> but. That's like the biggest disaster that possibly could ever befall us. Good mm. Lord, give that man a kiss. Give him a kiss now. Oh. Look at him saving oh your my. life. Oh, good Lord. Oh, that's good. Huh? It's oh. like giving a donkey strawberries. Huh? <laughs> good Lord. Uh, good level now, but we've gone over, I think, five beaver dams so far. We've only, it's like mid morning. So, yep, yep, but not for that, not bad, but bad. Oh! You should let him go. Let me get a picture of him though. Oh! <laughs> oh, <my God>. oh <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Good Lord, the three second rule, get him back in there! <laughs>
can't we it's see? All dirty. Good Lord, what <laughs> kind of culinary school did you go to? Give me your flipper. Your flipper. Oh. That's, that's your dad's bit, right? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you stink. Oh, that's oh, you stink. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> what, so, what, what, uh, what, what feature, feature did you like about this uh, tent? Would you like to okay. explain the features of this? It's, oh, I'm going to vomit. <laughs> Flame. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I got this new tent from Eureka. The summer pass. It's a brand new one. I, uh. Thank God. Oh, I got it because it's very aerated. <laughs> it's one of the most aerated, ventilated tents they have. Thank God! Oh, you stink. Welcome to Algonquin Park. Yes. Why would you not want to come here? It's beautiful. I couldn't understand it. Uh, <laughs> come visit us sometime. Yeah. Huh? Either. You look like a Lawrence of Arabia or uh, Catherine Hepburn. I'm not sure. Yeah, there one. you go. Yeah. I'll be Catherine. That's all right. I'm so happy, I'm crying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. We're done. All right. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers. Sometimes I think uh, it's the people you go with, even if you go solo, <laughs> that make the trip or not make the trip. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining me uh, with this uh, premiere and um, hope we all get out there soon. And, uh, you know, even if Algonquin's closed and we'll still go paddling in Crown Land. Uh, and hopefully things settle down a bit and yeah i thought i would do this to uh uh put everybody's mind away from things so cheers there everybody and um i will continue the, the, the speaking tour hopefully in the fall and probably with this I, i'll probably give another talk a different talk actually right so uh but yeah thanks for joining me and cheers <laughs>